So let's dive into Flutter then. And for this, let's create a brand new project. For that, open up your terminal or command prompt on your machine. So the default Mac OS terminal or your Windows command prompt. And in there, make sure that with the help of the CD command, which allows you to change directories, you navigate into the path where you wanna create that new project. So here I navigated into a playground folder, for example. It doesn't matter how you name that folder, but it should be the path where all your project files are stored thereafter, or where this new project folder is created in, to be precise. Once you're in that path, we can use the Flutter command, which is available since we installed the Flutter SDK in the first course module. And we can run the create command there to create a new Flutter project in that place where we navigated to. So now with that, you can give this project any name you want, like Flutter Course, or I'll name it Flutter Complete Guide. The name is up to you, and this just wrapped over two lines, so it's one name here. Make sure that in that name, however, you only have one word, so Flutter Complete Guide, it's one word, where the individual words are separated with underscores. Don't use dashes or blanks there, that will not be allowed and you'll get an error. Instead, use underscores for that project name. And this will then go ahead once you hit enter and scaffold out this new Flutter project for you. So now this creates this new folder, that Flutter Complete Guide folder in the path where you navigated to. And inside of that folder, it gives you all the base setup for a new Flutter project. And by the end, you should see an output that looks something like this. You can ignore warnings you might be getting here. Um, if Flutter Doctor basically showed you the same, it should work here. And now you can run these two commands to navigate into that newly created Flutter project folder and to then also run your Flutter project. However, I'll not do that here. Instead, I opened up the project here in Visual Studio Code, which is the IDE I'll be using throughout the course. Now, as you learned in the first course section, you can use either Visual Studio Code with the Flutter extension installed as we did it in the first course section, or you use Android Studio, which is also absolutely fine. However, I prefer Visual Studio Code and therefore that's the idea I will use throughout this course. Now, this is Visual Studio Code just configured as I showed it in the first course section, nothing else. And this is this Flutter project which we just created here in the command line. So this is the project and all the default files and folders we get in there. Now, in the next lecture, I will walk you through all these folders and files and explain what they do and with which files we will work mostly. But first of all, let's make sure that we can also see our app, not just in code, but on a device. And for that, you could use a real device connected to your machine. And of course, I also will show you how that works in detail later. But for now, let's simply use an emulator, a virtual device. And I will pick a virtual Android device since that works on both Windows and Mac OS and Linux. Whereas iOS devices, iOS simulators, iPhone simulators, only work on Mac OS. Nonetheless, later down the course, I will also show you how to run this app on an iOS simulator, so you will also learn that. Now to launch the app onto an Android emulator, we first of all need to create an emulator. And for that, you should start Android Studio, which you had to install anyways, and you should see that welcome screen there. Now in there, if you click on configure, you should have the option to choose the AVD manager. If you don't have that option here, you can open an existing Android Studio project and there simply navigate to the Flutter project you just created. So that's the Flutter project I created with Flutter Create. And in there, choose your Android folder as an Android project because that is a real Android project that's part of your Flutter project, your Flutter app. Now, once this opens, you could write code here Android code, which we certainly don't want to do. We want to write Flutter and Dart code and get an Android app automatically. I only opened this because here, under tools, once this initialization here finished, which will take a couple of seconds, you'll also find that AVD manager. So in case you didn't see that on the welcome screen, well then you can go here to tools and find the AVD manager here. 
So you should find it in either of the two places. If you find it in neither of these places, you should try to reinstall the Android SDK and possibly the entire Android Studio. But once you found it and you open it, you should see a screen that looks something like this. Here, I already got a couple of virtual devices. You might not have them yet. And you can simply create a new one with the button here in the lower left corner if you click on Create Virtual Device. Now in here, you can create different virtual devices and we'll use a phone in this course for testing. And you have different blueprints here. For example, you can create a Pixel 2 or Pixel 3 device. Um, you got other blueprints here. Um, also depends on the point of time you're watching this. You got really old or small devices as well, which we'll also use for testing later to see if our app works well on these devices as well. But for the moment, I'll go with the Pixel 2 and I would recommend that you also pick an image where you have this image here next to Play Store, this uh, play button style here. Because if you have that icon here, that means that this image actually comes with certain extra services installed, which make development with things like Google Maps and so on easier, or which makes testing these features easier. And that will help us later down the course. However, you could also launch a new simulator with that feature once we need it and go with a different one for now. Nonetheless, I will go with the Pixel 2 here and click Next thereafter. Now you can install and you should install a system image, which is basically the Android version that runs on the device. Now, I would recommend that you use the latest stable version here. Now, I could use Android Q here, and when you're viewing this, this might already be the latest version, but right now, when I'm recording this video here, this is the latest Android version that is available, the latest stable Android version, and I don't wanna develop for an instable or under development version where certain features might not work, and therefore I'll use this. Now, if you don't have that already, you might need to simply download this image first by clicking that download button. So choose that latest stable version here and click next again. And now you can give this emulator a name if you want to. I'll stick to the default. And all the default settings here should be fine. You could configure some advanced things, but only do that if you really know uh, what you're doing. I will instead go with uh, all the defaults and then click Finish. And now this creates this new virtual device, adds it to the list here, and now you can always launch it here by clicking that Play button. So that's exactly what I'll do here. I'll click that Play button here, and this will bring up that new virtual device, which is now booting up here. This is the virtual device on which we will now run our app as soon as it is done booting up. Here we go, this just finished booting. And now if we go back here into our project, we can run this Flutter app on this device. Now for running this, we got a couple of options. You can open up the terminal in here by going to your menu here and clicking on new terminal. And this is now your normal system terminal or command prompt just running inside of Visual Studio Code and it automatically navigated into this project folder, so you don't have to do this manually with the cd command. Now here you can run flutter run and it will run your app and it should automatically find this application here. You could absolutely do that, but with the help of this IDE and the flutter extension which we installed in the first course section, we got an even more convenient way of running our app. You can go to debug here and now you have two options of starting your app. You can start it in debugging mode or either by clicking here or by using this shortcut here. And this is something I'll show you later in a separate module where I will show you how you can debug your Flutter application and find and fix errors. You can also run it without debugging, which is a bit faster because with debugging, a lot of extra features get added to your app, so to say, for debugging only. And if you run it in non-debug mode, you simply have a bit of a faster app, which is a bit nicer for normal development. That can be run by clicking here or using this shortcut. And if you click this, it should also automatically spot your device. However, first of all, you have to choose, at least if you have multiple different extensions installed, um, with which uh, environment you wanna run your code and that would be Dart and Flutter here. So choose that if you are prompted. And now it will auto detect the emulator and launch this application that we have in this folder here on that device. So as you can see here in the bottom right, it's now building the project with the help of Android Studio and the Android SDK. 
And here, the top right, you have that uh, control bar, which allows you to control the execution of this app. You can always stop it by clicking that red stop button. You can reload the app, restart the app on the device uh, with that green refresh icon. You can hot reload with that flash, and hot reload means that changes that you made are added to the already running application, which is a really cool feature Flutter supports for development, makes development much faster because you don't have to restart your app all the time. You can also pause uh, if you want, and uh, you can then, these buttons are helpful for debugging later. So that's the control panel we got here. And the build process here takes a couple of seconds up to minutes. The first time you run this, subsequent reloads when you change something in code and you wanna see that in the device or on the device, that will be much faster. So it's just that first load, which takes a while. So let's wait for this uh, first launch to finish here. In the meantime, let me also mention that it probably automatically switched here to the debug console. So not the terminal anymore, but the debug console. And that is the console where you will see all the output whilst the app is running. So any errors will be shown here, but also some system messages which you might want to print will also be shown here. And we'll work with this quite a bit to fix errors we might be getting or to see a certain output uh, to validate that everything is working correctly in our application. So here it's now starting up. These are all default log messages which we're seeing here. And you should then see your app run on that emulator as I do it here. And uh, you then can press this button here in the bottom right corner to, well, interact with your application. Now, the first time it's loaded, the first few clicks might be a, a bit slow here, um, but thereafter you should be back to normal interaction speed. So this is the Flutter app, which we just created running on that emulator. And this is the code or the project in which we'll work on the code. Speaking of that, let's now walk through all the folders and files we have here and understand what they're doing.